everybody, and thanks for coming. From WHO Des Moines. The first number. Just turn it to 1040 for WHO. Just turn it to 1040 for WHO. And now here's the Varsity Band with What'll I Do? So come on, children. Yes, dance. Wait a minute, stop the music, stop the music. What do you say? Stop the music. Now, wait a minute, Fred. If you'll just take your nose, that one you used to talk through, out of that microphone. And the thing about my jokes is they don't hurt anybody. You can take them or leave them. Well, Charlie McCarthy, the woodpecker's pinup boy. Crying out loud. Announce the first number, Cecil. Oh, very well. Hi ho, everybody. Hi ho. That's new in a little while But there's no need to worry We'll still be on the dial This is the Iowa Barn Dance Frolic coming to you from the stage of the Shrine Auditorium from WHO Des Moines. comes to see me twice a year and stays six months each time. So. Oh. Why don't you play the South American way? You can forget all your cares. In Jack Kerrigan with Lucia Thorne and the orchestra in the 443rd Melody Madhouse. <laughs> Want to hear about my armadillos? Don't you want to hear about my peccadillos? This is your war correspondent, Jack Shelley, speaking to you from somewhere in Holland. Hello, Once WHO. Again. This is your war correspondent, Herb Kleinbeck, again reporting from the 7th Army Front. Once again, this report is being relayed to you through an Army mobile transmitter and the British Broadcasting Corporation. One of the most courageous fights in the series of bitter struggles to hold the great German counteroffensive in check and one of the first to climb up with a heavy defeat for an important part of the enemy forces was set out over the Christmas holiday weekend. While with our troops working their difficult way toward Munich, I had occasion to stop at Stalag 13D. Peace. Peace. Isn't it wonderful? Wait a minute. Stop the music. Stop the music. We're moving to a place that's new in a little while. But there's no need to worry, we'll still be on the dial.
Thanks for coming. From WHO Des Moines. broadcast pioneers and Palmer Communications, I am delighted to present you with this somewhat nostalgic broadcast microphone. I am told by some of your former colleagues that it is one of two remaining in our inventory that you used during your tenure as sports director at WHO in Des Moines. For heaven's sakes, yes. Now, commemorating this occasion, it has been inscribed in the following manner. Presented to the Honorable Ronald W. Reagan, President of the United States, for the Broadcast Pioneers and Former Communications Incorporated. It isn't what one would classify as a particularly uh, uh, small memento, <laughs> but we hope, sir, you find it a meaningful and worthy addition to your well, collection of memorabilia. Well, I'm delighted and very proud and happy. Yes, I did. Say, it seems to have held up pretty well. <laughs> I hope people will say the same for me. <laughs> I'm sure it carries many of your records. <laughs> remember when you said the old engineer lugged those things around? Yes. <laughs> and I remember. And it wasn't until I saw Ted Husing when we were broadcasting a, a, a game at the Notre Dame at Notre Dame. And my first time to see him, he was kind of a hero of mine. And uh, it wasn't until I saw him coming into the press box that I discovered that the announcer doesn't have to help carry the equipment. Jack Rickhouse, this is. This is a, an autographed Cub baseball, and of course a Cub cap, an official Cub cap for you because of your relationship with the Cub.
Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Klein, and welcome to Just Watch Us Now. Tonight, we have the opportunity to show off a new facility here at 1801 Grand Avenue, which we are very proud of. We're going to find out how television and radio work. But first of all, to get things started, we're going to meet Mr. William Ryan, the president of Palmer Communications, and Mr. George Carpenter, vice president and general manager of the WHO stations. Thanks, Tim. Palmer Communications is very proud of this building. I'm pleased to have moved their headquarters here in the morning. This building, we believe, represents the ongoing commitment of the company to the communications industry. And we certainly feel that this position the WHO stations provide even more important services to our listeners and to our viewers in the 80s and beyond as the new technological changes take place in this very exciting industry. You can be sure we'll be right at the forefront of it. Back to you, Tim. Hi, Pat. How are you? Our new building houses both television and radio, and it takes an awful lot of good people to put a great radio station like this one on the air. Hey, we have an open show going on right now up until 10.30 this morning, and then we're going to be talking about sharing parenthood. Thank you, Max. Good afternoon, everyone. We're here with WHO Sunday Afternoon Talk Radio. We do have an open show. Boy, but the Buckeyes are coming on strong. They defeated Minnesota today, and boy, the Golden Gophers. It's 27 minutes till 1 o'clock, and I'm Donna Nicholson reporting. And welcome back to WHO Talk Radio. I'm John London. Jack Egan is my guest, and he's the author of a new book called... Six minutes past the hour, 12 o'clock, on WHO Farm Radio. This is Farmline. Our guest is... Well, half the building here at 1801 Grand Avenue is WHO Radio, and we have a lot to be proud of. It has a 50,000 watt clear channel station that happens to be the voice of the Middle West. And a part of that is WHO Farm Radio Program. And here to talk to us about it right now is the head of the department, Keith Kirkpatrick. Hey, thank you, Tim. Well, you're, uh, you're looking at one of the radio farm departments, the oldest in the nation. Started here in 1936, been going ever since. And uh, we're proud of the fact that we have four full-time people here. Uh, here on WHO Radio, we do specialize in information and a little entertainment. We do markets. Mark does a lot of that. We have a lot of feature-type guests, which Lee does. In between, of course, we like to feature a lot of weather. And we have a lot of market reports. And so, uh, well, it all adds up to uh, probably the biggest effort in the United States. And it goes way back, way back in history. We're very proud of all of our programs here. In addition to Ag Journal, we, uh, we think we perform quite a service. See, I was just, uh, just on my way out to wax my Oscar in agriculture. Get out of here. Out of here. Have had time to show that or not. Back to you, Tim. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. On WHO Talk Radio, you can call in almost any time of the day to express your views and opinions on the issues of the day or just to talk about what you think is important in your life. Well, now we're going to introduce you to morning radio talk show host, Julie Gamak. Hi, Tim. Hi. WHO Talk Radio. Opinions expressed are those of the host and callers. Hi, I'm Julie Gamak, and I host the morning talk radio program. John London is here in the afternoon, and Jim Fry sits right at that table in the evening. Larry King will keep you company in the wee hours of the morning, and we have a variety of other programs on WHO talk shows. We have Sportsline, Sportsman's Notebook. Sunday afternoons, we have Dina Michaels with Sunday Afternoon Talk Radio. And in the morning, we have Farmline with Mark Pearson. That's just a sample of some of the many things we do here at WHO Talk Radio. You know, I'm often asked what happens behind the scenes on the talk show. Well, first of all, when you call in 282-5111, the producer, and in this case, it's Paul Menzel, will answer the phone and ask pretty much what you want to talk about. The producer will type in the message on the computer. I'll know what the person wants to talk about, basically, and how long they've been waiting. It's very helpful. Okay, and here in the uh, booth at WHO Talk Radio, I'm able to look at this TV screen. My producer tells me what's waiting for me on the various lines, and these buttons here correspond to the lines that you call us on Talk Radio on. The first six are our local lines here in Des Moines. The second over here are these two over here, our toll-free watch lines that you folks outside of Des Moines can call us on. It's a lot of fun to do talk radio because we're able to talk to guests from all over the country when you hear us with guests on the air. They're on one of these two lines. This one we use for out-of-state guests, and this one is for our local guests. You know, what really makes talk radio fascinating is you. 
the listener, and the caller. Radio is so spontaneous. We can be talking about what's happening in the news. Let's say it's a tax issue or a bond proposal or something like that. And we can get spokespeople on right there who are experts in the field. And that is a kind of spontaneity that radio provides that's really fascinating. I love talk radio. We can talk to the President of the United States one day and to somebody who farms in southwest Iowa the next. And that's what life is all about. And that's what talk radio is all about. And there are some other people, too, that make WHO radio possible, talk radio and everything else we do, and that's the engineers that work at WHO. They're on the job 24 hours a day, and we have to give them a lot of credit. Well, WHO Talk Radio provides you with the opportunity to talk openly about local, state, and national news. And if you want to know more about that news, then you should listen to WHO News Radio. It's broadcast news as it should be. And to tell us more about this is Ev Hickman, anchor of the Morning News Radio Block, and Bill Brewer, anchor of the Afternoon News Radio Block. Thanks, Tim. Here at WHO News Radio, we like to think that our new facilities at 1801 Grand are going to help us do a better job than we've ever done before. On our Morning News Block, we feature, of course, the latest developments from around the world overnight, as well as local happenings, weather reports from AccuWeather, and those traffic reports from Captain Jack, which keep people from getting hung up by trains or, or traffic jams on the freeway or other streets. In the afternoon, we stress local news because we like to keep you up to date on what happened while you were at work. We are the primary source for local news in the afternoon in central Iowa. And to bring you the local news as it happens, we like to make extensive use of our live line to bring you the news as it develops from the newsmakers themselves. And again in the afternoon, we have Captain Jack flying in the skies keeping a watch over that rush hour traffic to make sure that your trip home in the afternoon is a safe one. At WHO News Radio, we have more newscasts than just those in the afternoon and morning drive times. We also have late-breaking stories whenever they happen, 24 hours a day, plus regularly scheduled newscasts on the half hour. Radio 2, we'll take that live report from you uh, in about five minutes during the newscast. You all set? We not only like to bring you a news event itself, but we like to bring you a live report from the scene whenever possible, because the flavor of a news event, in addition to the event itself, is what makes a newscast go. That's the way broadcast news should be. Well, radio is on the second floor, and television is on the first. But just like radio, there are a lot of things happening behind the scenes to make it work. We're Channel 13, just watch us now. Nothing typifies the busyness and excitement of television like a newsroom, and we have the busiest one around. And to tell us about it now are T.J. Beer, Kate Sullivan, and Mike Keane. Well, I think for all of us, the chance to work in a new building is really a chance to work in a terrific facility, probably the best in the whole state. It's really nice, first of all, to make sure you have your own typewriter and you're not climbing over someone else's back. But more than that, we have lots of room for some great facilities, such as our live eye van and lots of good ENG photographic equipment. And because this is such a pleasurable place to work, it makes our working a lot easier, much more efficient, and we come out with a much better news product. I would have said the same exact things. Let's take a look at the newsroom and see what's going on. Rod is editing a story that we call a package. It's about some people who cannot make their house payments because they're unemployed. I'm going to give you kind of a Reader's Digest version of how a package is edited. Now, a package involves a reporter's voice and then pictures that you see. Right here, this tape has pictures, information that you see here. Rod will be choosing bits and pieces of it, transferring it down here electronically. We don't actually snip the tape. And then the finished product is seen right here. Now I'm going to pretend like this is going to go right on the air and I'm going to take Rod's tape away from him, eject it right like that. We'll be going into another room. I want to thank you for letting us uh, duck in here for just a second. 
We've been looking at one of four edit stations in our newsroom. We have several to do this as quickly as possible. Now, right now, I'm sauntering into this uh, particular, what we call our feed stations, but sometimes uh, we're dashing in here uh, at the last minute. And uh, I'm going to slip this right over John's shoulder right here as if we were going to put that right on the air. This is also the room where we receive the live eye signal as well as things such as the NBC nightly news and information from all over the world. Now, speaking of information closer at hand, uh, standing right by me here is our two-way radio, and we use that to uh, get in touch with our folks in the field, and they can tell us what stories we have uh, coming up tonight. Now, speaking of folks in the field, Kate Sullivan can tell you a little bit about the reporters that bring you the news. Thank you, TJ. Besides editing tape, writing the news reports is one of our main activities in the newsroom, and before the writing begins, a great deal of preparation by many people has already been done. First of all, the assignment editor, Jean Hartley, sits down the previous night and reviews all story possibilities for the next day. Then, first thing in the morning, he assigns the stories to the reporters and photographers. And let's look at the job of director. Two men, Bill Brown and Mike Smith, they're the men who shoulder responsibility for getting News Center 13 on the air. These men take the scripts from the newsroom, study them over carefully, and choose the graphics and camera shots that the show needs. We'll talk more about their jobs later. But one of the most interesting things about putting a newscast together is actually digging out the facts, and the reporters are the people that have to do that. Mike Keen's going to talk more about that right now. Thanks, Kate. A lot of our news comes from the NBC network as far as national and international news. And then we have the wire services, Associated Press, United Press International, the machines right here in the newsroom. As a matter of fact, close to my desk so I can hear him clacking away. But the real job of being a reporter happens at the local level. Reporters have to go out, research a story, dig for facts, check for accuracy. It's a long and sometimes tedious process, also very involved. Once the stories get back here to the newsroom, they get another going over. They're checked, they're rewritten, the anchors get involved, the producer, and also the assignment editor and the news director. When it comes to looking for stories, well, where do you look? Reporters have to take that to heart. They have to use their instincts. It's their job to do more than surface research and get more than surface information. And we're happy that we have a dedicated team of reporters here, reporters that can really do the job and work very hard to do it every day for every newscast. So what you've seen here is the behind-the-scenes working of News Center 13. It's an operation we're very proud of. We're very proud of the people who work here, too. And, of course, you've seen our staff of dozens of reporters and all those important people behind the scenes that bring you the news. And nobody is more important than you, the viewer, and we invite you to join us at noon 6 and 10 for News Center 13. Tim? While the news is a big part of this building, there are many other people who work here only behind the scenes. And when you talk about behind the scenes, you have to begin with Television Master Control. And to tell us more about this is my co-worker, Sue Toma. Thank you, Tim. Television Master Control is the core of the new WHO building, as it is any television station. And as you can see, Television Master Control is a maze of lights, clattering projectors, and rolling tapes. It's also the place where what you see at home leaves the building and goes to our transmitter. Films and videotapes are played back here, and all of the technical requirements for our broadcasts. Basically, Television Master Control runs the day-to-day -day operations of a television station. But for the faster, more complicated productions that we do here, like the News or PM Magazine, we need a well-equipped studio control room, just like this one. It's here that we're able to piece together all of the local shows that we do here at WHO-TV. This control room is run by a director whose main responsibility is to make a show look good. By using these various monitors, the director can pick or choose the camera shots he wants to put on the air. The director does this by pushing a series of buttons on what we call a switcher. He can also communicate to his camera people by talking Stand to them through a one. headset. The studio control room is also equipped with a device called a character generator. It's with this machine that we print those words that appear on your screen from time to time. And finally, the studio control room is equipped with an audio board that allows us to turn on mics and make sure that the sound you hear at home isn't too loud or too soft. Well, behind the scenes look of a studio control room is usually the most exciting place of any television station, but the most glamorous place is usually in front of the camera. So Tim, why don't you take all of our viewers out to the studio to show them that. Well, now to tell us about our new studios here, Arduino and Floppy. 
I like it, I like it. The fantastic production studio, isn't it great? It's great, I like it. You said that. I know. Mm -hmm. And you know that it's almost cavernous. Yes, it is. How cavernous in it is it? Try it again. How cavernous is it? Try it again. Okay. Welcome to our production studio. It's pretty wonderful and, and big. Oh, yeah. Hello. How are you? Boy, that's a big studio. Right. This is also the studio, by the way, where many of our commercials are uh, cut. Uh-huh. And uh, also some of our uh, main public service shows. And uh, the set the area that we're looking at right now would be the area where we tape our uh, Dwayne and Fred. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Fred. Uh, Dwayne and Friend show. Uh-huh. And also the floppy show is done in this area of our production studio. Every day, about 30 or 40 little kids come right in that door over there where it says exit. That's where they come in. <laughs> and file into the studio and get all set for some great fun, some great cartoons. Right. Also in this area, although we'll remove some of the uh, backdrops that you're looking at right now, is the area where we tape the Floppy Town Gazette. They've got their problems uh -huh. at the Floppy Town Gazette. Come on, Dwayne, we gotta wrap it up. You gotta get off. Well, I guess it's time to pack up and leave, Floppy. Guess so. And uh, we'll turn it back to our good friend. Excuse me, Claire. And I thank you, Dwayne and Floppy. Or is it Floppy and Dwayne? I don't know. Anyway, you know, one of the most important aspects of our production day here at WHO is producing the news. And this is our new news set, which we are very proud of here at News Center 13. And over here, we have Mike Lozano in his new weather center. And Mike's weather set allows us to bring you a more complete and comprehensive weather report as it happens. Right, Mike? Right, Tim. When News Center 13 moved to the new 1801 Grand Avenue location, we received more than a new home. We now have the capability to bring you lots of things that we didn't have the capability to do so before. One of those is the very latest in weather. Through our new computer equipment, we can access weather anywhere in the world, anywhere in the region, and particularly anywhere in the locality to bring you the weather information that you need to know. One of the things that we've gained the capability to do is the ability to annotate the radar. You know, radar is hard enough for an experienced meteorologist to understand, and it's even more so if you're sitting at home during a rainy night trying to figure out exactly what's going on. For that reason, we can annotate on our radar presentation, look at something on the screen, and give you a fairly good idea of exactly where it's heading and exactly at how fast it's heading. One of the other things that we have the ability to do with this computer is that we can give you some of the clearest, most understandable presentations as far as weather maps go. You know, we don't use smiley faces or anything like that. We use true meteorological representations. And on this, whenever you have a cold front, on here you see the basic map. Now we'll be taking a look at what you'll actually see on the air after we've gone through the process of putting in all of the symbols and terminology that's peculiar to the field of meteorology. You'll see the cold frontal positions, the locations of highs and lows, and temperatures all around the country. So if your Aunt Bess over in Brownsville is getting away for the winter, you'll be able to see exactly what high temperature she had today. And if your Uncle Carl up in Bismarck, North Dakota is up there, he had 69 degrees today. We like to think that it's worth the extra effort to bring you the very latest weather while it's still fresh, not several hours old. And also, anyone can tell you what's happening or what has happened. It takes a little bit of extra effort to tell you why it's happening. Here at Weather Center 13, we feel that we're uniquely equipped to bring you that information while it's still fresh. The Weather Center is only a small part of the total effort here at News Center 13 to bring you the very latest and best in news. A new computerized lighting system allows me to change that light back there with just a snap of my finger. That allows us to project pictures over the anchor man's shoulder and allows you to see exactly what he's talking about. Now, we also have a master lighting computer. With another snap, we can dim the entire studio to darkness. Wait a minute, that's a little bit too dark. Let's get the lights back on again. That's better. You know, I've always envied the news anchors because they have one advantage that the weather person does not have. You know, it's impossible to memorize an entire newscast. The weather cast is done entirely ad lib. News anchors use what we call a teleprompter. This is a television set that beams into a mirror and beams into another semi-transparent mirror. The effect is that they are able to read their script exactly as it's passing through. It makes for a better news product, at least we hope you agree. You know, there are a lot more people who work behind the scenes that you haven't even heard of. 
like the good people in sales and continuity. Now, these are people who sell commercials so that all of us can watch great programming for free. And people like me can get a paycheck. And to tell us more about it is Jim Zappel. Hi, Tim. We're on the uh, second floor here of 1801 Grand, our beautiful new building. Now, I don't care what anybody says about the broadcasting part of it, the TV part of it. This is the most important part of it right here. You can look right down the hallway and see our uh, radio administration, radio sales, and now we're coming into TV sales and TV administration. I say this is the most important part because if you work in this business, you get used to being in front of microphones, in front of cameras, and that sort of thing. You also get used to being paid, and these are the guys that go out to sell the time and sell the programs and sell the commercials that, that help to pay us who do the show. So we appreciate these people very much. As you can see, we get these uh, beautiful uh, new offices, modular offices here on the second uh, floor, and they just expand all over the place, and uh, who knows who's going to come bursting out of it. Well, here's my uh, good old friend and producer, Bob Earl. Jim, Bob uh, I, works with me. What do you I got there, Bob? I want you to know that according to the log, the Hayden Fry show is doing fine, but Let's Go Bowling is in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Bob, you would say that for years. I used to wake up in the morning, you know, for those 20 years that Iowa was, was losing football, and I'd say, sure. thank heavens for Let's Go Bowling. <laughs> This is our promotion department. No station in the country can exist without a lot of promotion to let you know what's happening in the way of our programming, to let us know, and to give us a lot of publicity. These gals smile a lot, they giggle a lot, have a lot of fun, and they do a lot of hard work. I thought one of the best uh, promotions they put out was the one for the Iowa State Fair. And this uh, picture down here particularly uh, strikes me. By the uh, way, Jim, uh, do we have a Hawkeye game that we have to promote next week? Verna Smith. I can't believe it. Well, you know, I get a little you know, carried away. I have so many things to do, you know, and I can't keep up the with Hawkeyes, all these ball Verna, games. The no. Hawkeyes, Verna, play every week, and they're playing at Michigan State. Good oh, heavens. Okay. Don't you don't you realize well, the importance of that? Would you write that, that down, girls? Please, you know, please write that down, girls, and publicize one, that. One more ball game. <laughs> Hayden Fry Show and the mm -hmm. Iowa Hawkeyes on, on Radio 2. Okay, Jim, we'll do our best. All right. This is our promotion department, and as I say, they are hard at work 24 hours a day. If they're not working here, they're thinking a lot. Well, you've seen a lot of equipment and technology tonight, but the real stars here at 1801 Grand are not only the people you see in front of the camera, but the people behind the scenes as well. And now we have a salute to all the people who bring you the programs you hear and see every day. Of course, a fine facility like this one just doesn't happen. It takes the creativity and imagination of many people. And because of that, we like to make two thank yous. First, to Executive Vice President Robert Englehart, who supervised the planning and construction of this building. And to the architects of Charles Herbert and Associates, who have designed what is possibly the finest broadcast facility in the Midwest. Still, it's what we say and do on the air that really counts. This building will help us give you the best in news, information, and entertainment possible. And now is the time to just watch us now. <laughs> 